Welcome to the fourth session of Short and Sweet Philemon. So far, through the group sessions and through the personal devotions, you have read the book of Philemon at least seven times, if not more. You've seen the importance of reflecting forgiveness and reconciliation to our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And you've seen how that is a demonstration of what Christ has done for us. And you've read about how Paul is asking Philemon to reflect his relationship with Christ through forgiving a guy named Onesimus who betrayed him and who stole from him. But Onesimus is now a Christian, now a believer in Christ. And so Philemon needs to forgive him and reconcile with him so that he can reflect the love of Christ and the reconciliation that we receive from Christ to a lost world around him. In the last four verses of Philemon, which we're going to study today, we're going to get into Paul's farewell. In verses 21 and 22, Paul writes that he's confident that Philemon will follow his instructions and that Philemon will reconcile with Onesimus because Philemon has already proven himself to be a man worthy of Paul's confidence and worthy of Paul's trust. Paul knows that Philemon is a man of good character because of the way that he leads his church, the way that he leads his family, and the way that the world around him, the people around him are talking about him. They note that he is a follower of Jesus, and they know that Philemon will follow Jesus in whatever he does. Paul spent the first 14 verses of Philemon complimenting him and encouraging him, and he finishes his letter in the same way. Paul wants Philemon to know that he's not coming to him as just an authority figure, as someone trying to tell him how to run his relationships. Paul is coming to him as a friend, as a brother in Christ, and recognizing that Philemon is a good man, a man who is seeking after Jesus, who is a true follower of Christ. And Paul is coming to him saying, I know all of this about you. I know that you love Jesus. I know that you seek to follow him. So this relationship needs to be fixed. And Paul is encouraging and correcting Philemon and asking him to welcome Onesimus back, to truly reconcile that relationship. Philemon has already proven himself to be noble and Christ-like. So Paul is not even worried one bit about Philemon following his instructions. He is completely confident that Philemon will follow through and will welcome Onesimus back as a brother in Christ and as a member of his household. And now, in the final greetings, Paul lists five people who want to say hi to Philemon, to give him greetings. Those five people are Epaphras, Mark, Aristarchus, Damas, and Luke. You probably are already familiar with Mark and Luke because they wrote the Gospels of Mark and Luke, but the other people you may not be as familiar with. In your workbook, I've listed some fast facts, just some things about each of these people, each of these men, so that you can know a little bit more about them and that you can have that background information. Because even though we are in the last few verses of this letter, it's still important to read them and God still wants to speak to us even through the last few verses of this letter. When Paul includes these five people in his farewell to Philemon, he's linking this book with the letter to Colossians as well. Because all of these men are also listed in the farewell to the letter of, of Colossians. And actually, in Colossians, if you read it, um, which you will in your workbook, you'll actually see that Onesimus is also listed. And when Paul lists Onesimus at, in the conclusion to his, book, to his letter to Colossae, Paul is saying that Onesimus really has been transformed. It's not a fake transformation. Onesimus truly has been changed from slave to free. He's been changed from a sinner to to righteous because of because of the blood of Jesus and he is actively ministering with Paul and he is sharing the gospel with others and he is a leader in the church Onesimus was living the same way that Philemon was Onesimus was transformed by Jesus just like Philemon was and the two of them can work together now because they are now pursuing the same thing they are now on equal footing and they are now 
leaders in the church. The book of Philemon truly is a book of reconciliation. Christian relationships are unique because we reflect our relationship with God through our relationships with other people. As you finish this study of Philemon today, think about the people in your own life who you need to reconcile with. Talk about that with your group and amongst your friends and make a plan to do that, to reconcile. Because ultimately, as Christians, you and I, our greatest and highest calling and really the reason why we're on this earth is to show the hope of Jesus to other people, to those who do not know him. And one of the best ways that we do that is through our relationships. So when, if our relationships are not right, if we're not reconciled with one another, how are we going to show and tell people about the God who reconciles us to himself through Jesus? So I encourage you to think about that. And I encourage you to take action to reconcile your relationships, just like Paul encouraged Philemon and Onesimus to do in this letter.